Hey there, cats and kitties. I'm the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, we'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 7 of the anime series, Aria the Scarlet Ammo Double A. <laughs> and I guess, you know, the pretense of these girls wanting to get after each other, and, you know, get into each other, um, lusting after each other and everything, the pretense is out the window. We're full on in this episode. Takachiho wants to make Akari her sex slave and wants her to want it and everything like that. <laughs> okay, whatever, full on. We're just going to go full mast now. And um, it was actually pretty funny. It was actually kind of entertaining to me, even though I don't usually get into that stuff. Um, we're beginning this episode much as we did the previous, with a sort of off-the-wall, strange-ass dream, you know, this fantasy sequence of Takachiho's... <laughs> It's like unfolding in the Sahara Desert. You have this very southern sort of plantation house that she's riding back to on camelback and everything. And the whole essence of the dream, you know, it goes over the top with her want, her fantasizing about being with Akari, you know. It looks like she's going to torture her, like whip her and everything, get all sadomasochistic because in this fantasy dream sequence, Akari's not meeting her at the door like all the other rest of the help and everything. And she doesn't have her lemonade ready. And so she's like, you're going to be punished. And she's rubbing her head in a weird way. And then we see her tied up in a barn while Camel's just munching on it, you know. And like... All of a sudden, that whip turns into one of those feather duster things, and she's just going to tickle her to death. Lo and behold, Takachiho wakes up, and there's a couple really cool little misdirections where, like, you think maybe Akari's in the room, like, she knocked stuff over, and this is what woke Takachiho up. Somehow, you're not exactly sure, but of course, there's a big poster on the wall instead. And Takachiho comes complete with little dolls of not only herself, but of Akari on her pillow, which she then tries to enact another fantasy sequence. And she's like completely just dumbstruck at, you know, she can't come up with a good story. And then the next time we see her after the credits, you know, she's in the elevator and she's talking about maybe I should hire a writer, <laughs> you know. Um, okay. And, of course, she runs into Akari going to class or whatever, and there's this awkwardness. The thing about Takajiho is, like, she's completely socially awkward. She's had everything handed to her, and anything she wants is just, you know, to request it, with the exception of interpersonal connectivity. <laughs> you know, much more interpersonally connected does she want to be with Akari, but even just the friendship... You know, she's stumbling and stuttering over her words and everything like that. And it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> you know, you feel a little bad for her, even though she's been a bitch up to this point in the series. But, you know, she ends up deciding to go <laughs> to Yu Yu and Yaya um, and have, you know, these like she does this elaborate thing where she's putting out roses and, and leaving a line of them up to Akari's apartment. The sister doesn't know what the hell to make of it. They only have a bucket to put them in. <laughs> You know, and they're being spied on, of course, by Shino, who is, of course, Miss Obsessive for Akari as well. And you know this isn't going to go well. Of course, there's an invitation to Takachiho's place, and she goes all out. Like, you know, there are desserts all over the place. You know, food is everywhere. She's got Yu Yu and Yaya being servants and everything like that. They're looking very glaringly at Akari. They figure this is all to do with a master plan, even though... Both of them admit, you know, Takajiho is not very good at making out plans and everything, being a strategist. But she's, you know, kind of conniving to them that this is all a master plan to trap Akari and get back at Akari, whatever it is. But it's not, you know, she just wants to be her friend. And finally she works up the courage to ask Akari flat out, are we kind of sort of friends now? And as soon as she gets the yes, we're we're kind of friends, you know, she launches herself at Akari and she's just flat out molesting her <laughs> you know let's let's make this a deeper relationship than just this cursory one you admitted you're my friend now i'm gonna do ya. <laughs> you know she comes flat out and says it like three times in this episode um and of course gangbusters through the wall is <laughs> she you know who wants to go on the attack this leads to the sparring match the next day whatever it is in this rundown building and everything and they're gonna go you know sword on sword and all that kind of stuff for an action sequence for this to be you know the impetus behind it it's kind of ridiculous but it was actually a half decent you know almost a chess game of a back and forth between these two who have these tremendous skills sword fighting and everything um so i was actually enjoying it even though i mean takjio basically had the upper hand throughout the entirety of it 
And conveniently enough, at this point, you have, I think it was uh, Kirin's posse from back when they were trying to get the lust on with uh, Raika, you know, trick Raika into becoming Kirin's bride in the previous episode. They're walking by, if it is them, and they hear this and they're like, oh, I wonder what's going on. So they're going to go check it out. They're starting to record with their phones and take pictures as you know, Shino has made this move, which she completely flummoxed. She ends up sneezing because she, you know, like hit a pipe or whatever it was to knock Takachiho out of the way. And of course, she rebounded. And so they're sword on sword. They're head to head. And this is where the, the whole fight breaks down and they're talking about, they're like comparing notes, you know, oh, I have some of Akari's hair, I have her pillow, I have this, that I, we'll trade, we'll do this, that, and the other thing. What did her, you know, chest smell like? <laughs> this kind of stuff. And Akari's just sort of like not hearing it. She's like, I wonder if they're going to be friends now. Duh. <laughs> you know. And then, of course, one of the four girls in the aftermath of this, when they're like, get the hell out of here, falls over this like sort of, you know, cliff, like a hole in the floor. And Akari is the first one to act. And this, you know, again, with the impetus being ridiculous behind all of this, another really intense sequence where I was like, are they going to kill this girl? Is she going to fall to her death? But no, Akari. And I was wondering if Akari was going to summon any of her sort of special abilities at this point, which she didn't. But, you know, she jumps down, leaps after her with this, like, wire, whatever it is. Shino grabs onto the end of it. She has one of her own. Then you have Takachiho. They're all working together is where this all ends up. And Akari, you know, sort of tries to be the piece between them. These two Yandere crazy bitches who just want to get in and on Akari, you know, for all intents and purposes. And she's just trying to make them be friends. And they kind of leave it. You know, amiably enough, amicably enough, um, but yeah, with Takachiyo being like, we'll kind of be friends, but we're going to have a friendly rivalry. We're going to, you know, and then again, all out, she's like, I bet you Shino wants to do you too. And like, kind of just like, do what? And I thought it was absolutely hilarious that at that point the traffic that has been non-existent suddenly comes in overabundance so you can't hear everything that Doc Chio is saying in graphic detail but you you see enough of the dialogue translated to like fill in the blanks what the hell she could be saying and everything and it's just like <sighs> I I can't believe I found it that funny like I was laughing my ass off um because that was it it was just over the top They've been skirting around it. The pretense is out the window, as I said at the start of the video. Um, it's all on. You know, these girls want on each other, and in the worst way, <laughs> you know. And it's kind of like, all right, well, let's see where it goes. Um, so, yeah, we end this episode with another little sneak peek of this girl that I'm led to believe is kind of like the antagonist of the series, going after Kari for whatever reason, um, you know, very much sort of the Rico to Arya in the first season of Arya the Scholar of Ammo, but we haven't really seen much of her, and I think it's interesting that the dialogue is along those lines, you know, I think she's telling Rico, well, I'm just going to take my time, I'm doing my nails, I'll, you know, hit, I'll strike when <laughs> the striking's good, that kind of thing, and um, she's like, all right, whatever, you know, whatever you want to do, and what's with the nail polish, and she says something about wanting to carry her collection with her. Now, I'm wondering if this, you know, is kind of like uh, the gauntlet in the Marvel Universe with all the different jewels or whatever, each one being a different color and representing a different power. I'm wondering if that's kind of what the story behind the nail polish is. Like, maybe this girl has supernatural powers like they've, you know, shown Akari to have, even though she doesn't seem to be aware of it. And there's a lot of mystery there. Well, what's that all about? I'm wondering if these different colors of nail polishes, you know, these are some kind of weaponized uh, treatments that this villainess has, and it'll come into play at some point, like if she and, you know, Akari go head to head or not. I don't know. Um, but it was a mad entertaining episode, even though it doesn't fall in the line of my particular interests. Um, they managed to do it in a way that I was just like laughing my ass off and enjoying the hell out of it. So what can I say? What more can I say? Um, otherwise, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below if you enjoyed the episode, if you watched it as well. If you were surprised at them throwing again the pretense out the window and just going full mast with this girl on girl on girl once girl you know theme um just right in your face or if you expected it from the get-go so otherwise that'll be pretty much it for me on this with this video finds you well and i'll catch you all later peace